Introduction to Atomic Theory. All right, so let's just talk a little bit about atoms. And basically, the basic building block of all matter is the atom. And the smallest piece of an element that maintains the identity of that element is called an atom. Now, individual atoms are extremely small. So um, they're about 10 to the negative 10 meters in size. That's also called an angstrom, which is a unit that is used in chemistry a lot, although it's not an official SI unit. Um, but individual atoms are so small, it would take about 50 million of them in a row to make a line that's about a centimeter long. And it's also very difficult to believe that all matter is made up from them, but it is. So let's talk a little bit about Dalton's atomic theory. So it's composed of three parts. Um, the first is that all matter is composed of atoms. And atoms of the same element are the same. Atoms of different elements are different. Okay, so that's gonna be, become important a little bit later. We'll see, um, we'll see how that uh, applies when we look at the periodic table. Um, also, atoms combine in whole number ratios to form compounds. Now, these concepts are, you know, really a basis in chemistry, these, these three concepts. Now, there are exceptions to points two and three. Uh, the exception to point two we'll address uh, shortly in this course, but the exception to point three where they combine in whole number ratios, that won't be covered in this course at all. You have to get into inorganic chemistry to uh, see that. Okay, so let's talk about the structure of the atom. And so the atom is composed of subatomic particles. So those are smaller than the whole atom itself. And one of those particles is called an electron, a proton, and a neutron. Now, protons and neutrons are bigger, they're more massive, they weigh more, and they're found in the nucleus, and they're compressed together in the nucleus. Electrons are very, very light in mass, they're found around the nucleus and they form an electron cloud around the nucleus. So here's a picture of that. So you can see here's our nucleus. We have protons and neutrons in the nucleus and um, electrons are shown here as particles, but basically we have an electron cloud around the, around the nucleus. And those are the electrons forming that electron cloud. So here are the relative masses. Uh, so the proton is a positively charged subatomic particle. It has a charge of plus one. Um, we often represent it with a uh, lowercase p with a plus sign and a superscript. And um, the mass is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. Notice that it's in kilograms. Uh, neutrons are similar in mass to uh, protons. And the symbol is usually just an N or sometimes an N to the zero power, just showing that it doesn't have any charge. So that's why they're called neutrons, because they don't have any charge. Uh, electrons, they are negatively charged. They have a charge of minus one. So that's, uh, that offsets that plus one from the proton. And look how much lighter they are. So they're 9.1 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. And so basically all atoms of all elements are composed of electrons, protons, and with one exception, there's one element that doesn't have neutrons. But otherwise, they all have protons, electrons, and neutrons. All right, now let's talk about uh, this concept. Atoms of one element are the same, while atoms of different elements are different. So basically what we're saying is that an atom of the same element will always have the same number of protons in the nucleus. So a helium atom will always have two protons in the nucleus. A sodium atom will always have 11 protons. Oxygen atoms will always have eight protons. That's just always, always, always. That's basically what defines it as a sodium, oxygen, or helium atom. It has to have that number of protons. Okay, now we're gonna talk about uncharged atoms. So if they were charged, we would call them ions, but we're gonna talk about uncharged atoms. And an uncharged atom of any element is always gonna have the same number of electrons as protons. They have to be equal. 
So remember, protons are plus one charge, electrons are negative one charge, and we have to have a neutral charged, uncharged, you know, neutrally charged or uncharged uh, atom at the end, and so they have to offset each other. So helium is going to have two protons plus two and two electrons minus two to offset that to have an overall neutral atom. Uh, sodium will have 11 protons, plus 11, and 11 electrons to offset that, negative 11, okay, in charge. All atoms of oxygen, eight protons, so plus eight in charge, and eight electrons, negative eight in charge. So making overall a neutral atom. Now, if an atom is missing electrons or has extra ones, then we're gonna call it an ion. And we're going to talk about those later because we'll talk about cations. They're the ones that are missing some electrons and anions. They actually have some extra ones, one or more um, electrons, and those are called ions. But we'll talk about them in a future presentation. Okay. Now, atoms of the same element can have a different number of neutrons in the nucleus. Okay. They have to have the same number of protons in the nucleus, but they can have a different number of uh, neutrons. So that means that all atoms of helium will have two protons. Um, now, most atoms of helium will have two neutrons. And so that is, uh, the mass number is four for that helium isotope. Okay, so that's a helium isotope. A small fraction will only have one neutron. And then we would represent that as, you know, instead of two plus two, we'd have two plus one giving us three. Now, all atoms of oxygen will have eight protons. Um, most atoms of oxygen will have eight neutrons, and that's 16 oxygens. That's that isotope. But there's a small fraction that'll have 10 instead, and then that would be oxygen 18. Okay, now when we refer to an atom, we always just use the element's name, okay? So the term sodium, if we say sodium, that refers to the element, so elemental sodium. It also refers to just an atom of sodium. So in other words, we don't have to say atom of sodium. We just say sodium. And chemistry defines a symbol for each of those elements. The atomic symbol, which we're going to look at next, is a one or two letter abbreviation of the name of the element. Okay? So let's take a look at that. Um, now, by convention, you can see over here, the first letter is always capitalized. The second letter is not. That's very important. So it's always lowercase. First letter cap, second, layer, uh, second letter lowercase. Okay? And notice most of them you can see where that abbreviation came from. Okay? And it's pretty straightforward. Notice there's also some elements that only have a one letter abbreviation, like boron and carbon. But let's go down here. Copper is a little bit different, okay? And that's, that's uh, because originally copper had a Latin name, okay? So CU for copper. Uh, gold is very, very different. So gold is AU, all right? So it's best to get yourself familiar with these elemental symbols. You don't need to memorize them. As you go through the course, you'll, you'll become more and more familiar, but it probably wouldn't hurt to sit down with the periodic table to sit down with this table uh, in your textbook and just get yourself familiar so that you know you recognize an element when you see it. Um, so, uh, so this table in your book, 3.2, uh, it includes all the element names plus the symbol found on the periodic table. All right, so here's our periodic table of the elements. And so let me just explain a few things here, okay? So let's look at boron. Boron has a five above it. That's its atomic number. That tells you how many protons it has, okay? Uh, carbon, six protons. Nitrogen, seven protons. The number at the bottom is a weighted average of mass of all the different isotopes of boron, but we haven't talked about isotopes yet, but that's what that is. That's a weighted average. But importantly, here's our elemental symbol, V for boron, and then the atomic number, which represents the number of protons. And for a neutral atom, it also represents the number of electrons for that element or that atom. Okay, now isotopes are atoms of the same element. So basically, these atoms all have the same number of protons, but they have different numbers of neutrons. And so we use atomic symbols to represent isotopes. So that's this guy right here. 
So, um, so the A at the top, that's the mass number. That tells you basically the number of protons and neutrons added together. Uh, Z is the atomic number. You can see that on the periodic table. That's that, like for boron, I, I pointed out there was a five above it. That's the atomic number for boron. And then X is just the elemental symbol. So for boron, it would be B. For sodium, it would be Na. Um, and so basically, let's look at an isotope of carbon. One of them has six protons and six neutrons. So six plus six is 12. That's our mass number. And then the number of uh, protons is six. And then of course, we're talking about carbon. So we're gonna use its elemental symbol there. So this is basically the uh, atomic symbol for carbon-12. All right, so let's practice this. So, uh, so try these out and then we'll check out the answers. So what is the symbol for an isotope of uranium that has an atomic number of 92 and a mass number of 235? And then we also wanna figure out how many protons and neutrons are in 56 Fe, which is iron. Okay, so that's the 56 isotope of iron. All right, so, um, so let's go ahead and write down the atomic symbol for this isotope. Now we, we were told it has a mass number of 235. That's the protons and the neutrons added together. And so that's gonna go in that top spot where the A was. Z is for the atomic number, so that's 92. That's also the number of protons. U is the elemental symbol for uranium. So now just, just as an aside, if we wanted to know the number of neutrons in this, uh, this atom of uranium, we would just take 235 and subtract 92, and that would be the number of neutrons that that, uh, that isotope has. Now, how many protons and neutrons are in 50, 56 uh, Fe, so 56 iron? Well, if we go to the periodic table, we're gonna see that every iron atom has 26 protons. So we can calculate the number of neutrons, just as I mentioned up here. That's gonna be the mass number minus the atomic number. And that's gonna give us our number of neutrons. So 56, we were given in the atomic symbol, minus 26 protons that we got from the periodic table. And that means that that, uh, that isotope of iron has 30 neutrons. Okay, so let's just summarize what we've learned. So chemistry is based on uh, modern atomic theory. And basically that, states that all matter is composed of atoms. And atoms themselves are composed of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Now each element has its own atomic number, and that's the number of protons in the nucleus. We can have isotopes of elements, and so these isotopes, they're the same elements, so they have the same number of protons, but they have different numbers of neutrons. And Elements are all represented by an atomic symbol. We can find all of those on the periodic table. And this periodic table is a chart that organizes all of the elements.